Glim, we want to capture something of your personal relationship with the living God who made the heaven, the earth, the sea, and all the things that are in them. Actually, the book of Acts, which we might call the Acts of the Holy Spirit, we read of a power encounter of the healing of the lame man. And the lame man, he was lame from birth. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, this man leapt up and began to walk. Then we read in the same chapter of Acts 14, that Paul was raised from the dead after being stoned and was dragged from the city. And Glynn, you were also raised from the dead. Will you tell us what happened? I was laying in this hospital bed and uh, I thought I'd gone to sleep. And the next thing I knew was that I was looking down from the ceiling. Uh, that shook me for a start. And then a, a young lady, a nurse, and also a young man who was a doctor, walked into the room, walked into the ward, and as he walked underneath me, I saw that he had a double crown in his, in his hair, which suddenly made me realize that this wasn't a dream. I couldn't possibly have thought about a double crown in somebody's head. And then I looked at the person in the bed and it was me. And I, I, I was just flabbergasted, as you can imagine. And then behind me, as I looked around, there was this great big shaded black hole and I was slowly being drawn into it, very slowly being drawn into this black hole. No lights in there. And then from my Sunday school days, I remembered somebody telling me about body, soul and spirit. And I realized that that body down in that bed was me. But my soul and my spirit was up here near the ceiling and the most utter terror came over me because I realized I'm being taken into death and I screamed out to God God I need a miracle the next thing I open my eyes because I can't remember blinking up there I open my eyes and I'm looking up at the doctor and the nurse and they both jump back. And uh, I thought to myself, goodness me, he said, are you all right? So I said, yes, yes, I'm quite all right, thank you. And I daren't tell them what had just happened to me because they would have sent me up to Waterhaven. So anyway, um, I realized that I had just survived death. And because I'd called out to God, he'd heard my cry and answered it. So Glenn, even at that moment when you had left your physical body, you were on the ceiling, your soul and your mind was there and you could feel the terror of going towards the darkness, something caused you to cry out for the Lord to help you. 
And even at that late moment, he responded and came and got you. You know, it's, it's funny. I didn't even think that God wouldn't do it. I just believed that in my desperation, he'd hear my cry. Because even although I was only a little child, when I was told about body, soul, and spirit, um, I realized it was real. And I was in a situation where it was so important that I believed in this God. And I didn't realize that I believed so, I suppose it was desperate, you know, the desperation in me. But I believed this God was real. And not only that, but that he was the God of the impossible. And he could do what I asked him. Now, just so that those watching this program, Glyn, uh, can fully appreciate the context of that awesome and amazing testimony, at the point of being raised from the dead and healed, you were enjoying being a Freemason. Tell us a little bit of your time as a Freemason and why Freemasonry. Well, a friend of mine um, invited me to become a Freemason, actually. And because I was in business, I thought it might be good. So I said, yes, okay, uh, if you would propose me, or he, he had to propose me. So I said, if you would propose me and find a seconder, I'll, I'd be willing to join. So of course, um, when I went and uh, saw what went on uh, in a, they pull the curtains over the window so there's no daylight coming in. It's all a, a candle here and a light there. Um, and uh, they put me through the, the, um, the questions which you have to answer. And, uh, and I met, uh, afterwards there was a, a, a dinner uh, which was quite attractive, very, very tasty too. And I thoroughly enjoyed being with the guys. I knew a lot of them, of course. And, um, and I thought, yeah, this is all right. Yeah. And um, what I didn't understand was a lot of the procedures seemed to be, um, I don't know, a bit silly, if you like. Um, we didn't really take much notice and we just thought, oh, well, you know, just go along with it. Um, because everything else was quite good. Glenn, while still being a Freemason and involved in all the idolatry that you were involved with, the living God who made the heaven and earth, the sea and all the things that are in them came and brought you back from the dead and totally healed you. How does that make you feel, that revelation right now? I tell you what, there's times when I find it hard to believe that this God could reach down to a, a sinner like me and hear my prayer and do something about it. And that's why now I can get excited about it because I realize that this God is real, you know, uh, so long in my life I went without even thinking about God and now he's everything to me. I want to be like this Jesus. I, I want to have that sort of way that he had where he could um, uh, understand what people were even thinking about what he said to them. and uh, uh, and talk back to them. I would have got really angry and I would have told them to clear off. You know, but He didn't. He just spoke to them in a normal way and said, look, this, this, that, the other. And he could talk. And I want to be like that. So Glenn, may we return to the time immediately after being raised from the dead and totally healed, leaving hospital, and getting back into a new life without sickness, 
what was it like? What what was going through your mind from that experience? What, what was different? The only thing I can say to you is this, is that I knew God was real for the first time in my life. That he, he thought about me and he was, I could speak to him and, and he'd hear me. And I don't know, he, to me, he is the God of the impossible. And every, the, the whole of life seemed to change for me completely. And, uh, and I saw it was like a sunny day every day of my life. Really, that's how it was. It, it released something in me that, whether it was the darkness that was in me, went. And suddenly, I'm a new bloke. What were your friends and family saying? Even those that maybe you fellowshiped with at the lodge, uh, you were a successful businessman. What about where you work? What were your work colleagues? Because here was this Glyn, full of the Lord. Every day is a bright day. How did that, how did you communicate that? I believe the Lord wants to, you to know Him. Because He knows you. He knew me. And I realized that um, there was something missing. There was something missing in my life. And it wasn't until I went to buy a house that this guy who, who was selling the house um, said to me, um, I've got to ask you a question. And my wife said, it's all right, we've got the money. We, we don't need a mortgage for your house. And he said, no, that's not the question. He said, do you know this Lord Jesus Christ as your savior? And then that opened it up to me that, yes, no man comes to the Father but by me. I remember reading that in the Bible as a young boy, you know. And um, anyway, to cut a long story short, I went to his church and uh, the, the vicar went through, they sang some lovely songs and the pastor, rather, he wasn't a vicar, he was a pastor. And uh, he uh, uh, preached his sermon and um, I'm sat there thinking, boy, I could do with a cigarette. And then just at that moment, he said, if you want to know this Lord Jesus Christ as your savior, and I remembered the words of this friend whose house I'd gone to buy. I thought, that, that's it, that's it. And then I thought, oh, I don't want to go out in front of all these people. And then suddenly a voice said to me, Glenn, this Jesus is real. And I leapt to my feet, frightened the daylight out of my wife, leapt to my feet, and I'm walking down the aisle. In fact, I may have run. And Tears are running down my face, you see. And I thought so. One part of me was saying, for goodness sake, pull yourself together, you fool, in front of all these people. But there was something else in me saying, I don't care. I found what I've been looking for all my life. I found what I've been looking for all my life. That's an amazing story. You had never met this man who was selling the house before. You'd no. never been there before. No. So the Lord kind of set up a situation to hijack you. Oh, didn't he just? Didn't he just? And, you know, I promised this bloke, I'd go, he asked me to get down on my knees and, and come to the Lord there, but um, for some reason or, I, reason or other, I couldn't do it. Anyway, I went to his church, and uh, this is where the pastor, he said his little sermon, I'd enjoyed the singing. And then he said, and if you want to know this Lord Jesus Christ as your savior, and those were the words this man had just said to me just a few days ago. And I thought, yes, yes. And then another part of me thought, well, not here, you know, in front of all these people. And then this little voice said, but Glenn, this Jesus is real. Boy, I was up on my feet, 
down that alleyway, or the aisle, I should say, not alleyway, and uh, the tears are running down my face. I remember it so well. And one part of me was saying, for goodness sake, pull yourself together, you fool, in front of all these people. But another part of me was just so awake about what I'm going to do. I'm going to find this Lord God, and he's going to, oh, well, I didn't even know what was coming, but I just knew I wanted, I wanted this Lord God in my life. Knew I wanted, I wanted this Lord God in my life. After that spiritual life-saving experience, to go with your physical life-saving experience, you were still going to the monthly Freemasonry meeting at the Lodge. You were still enjoying the fellowship with them. What happened next? What did you begin to see or sense or hear from the Lord in that Lodge environment? Well, I was getting ready to go to the Lodge, actually. And I was looking forward to it. And uh, suddenly, I remembered some of the things that people in the church had been saying to me about, look, you can't be a Freemason and a, um, a Christian. And um, it worried me a bit. I thought, well, I don't know, you know. Uh, uh, and I just got down on my knees and I said, Lord, look, if this is wrong, will you please show me? And got together and went, went to the lodge and um, we were raising somebody to the third degree. And um, in this particular uh, section, you, you lay in a coffin or a representation of a coffin and um, somebody then pulls you out of this coffin with a special um, grip and uh, while this was happening this voice said to me now don't forget the lodge is in darkness there's just a candle over the worshipful master's chair and uh, it's very shadowy but you you can see everything and as he's coming out of the the coffin a voice said to me and I thought it was a bloke behind me in one of the seats behind me. And he said, what's going on here then? And I said, um, oh, he's, he's being brought back to life. And I said, born again. I don't know why I said that. And then just as this guy got upright, this voice said to me, but into whose kingdom? And oh my goodness, I suddenly realized that where I'd been brought back into Christ's uh, uh, kingdom, I'd been brought into Satan's kingdom. And I didn't want any more to do, anything more to do with it. And although I'd been looking forward to, to the dinner, because the grub was good. Um, I left. As soon as the lodge was finished, I left the place and I knew I would never go back into a Freemasonry lodge again. Strangely enough, the next morning when I woke up, I'm thinking about what happened yesterday and I couldn't get over it. I thought, oh, come on, it's only a crowd of blokes, you know, we are doing good, actually. We do good things. We, you know, um, we've got a hospital and a Freemasonry school and all this sort of thing. Surely there's nothing evil in that. And I thought, I'll go and see this friend who, who um, invited me into the Freemasonry. So I went along to see him. And um, I said to him, just casually, like, um, I, I'm, I won't use any names here. Um, I just said to him casually, um, I'm 
taken my clearance from Freemasonry. So he said, oh, why is that then, Glenn? So I said, I found the Lord Jesus Christ. And his reaction, I, I couldn't believe it. And I realized then that what I'd done was, going, was right. Would it be true to say that there came a point where you knew that you knew that you had to make a choice, a decision? Can you bring the, those watching the program into that moment, that the choice about two kingdoms? It's amazing how it worked because we were in church one evening and we were singing this song about Jesus coming and dying for our sins. And that's when I realized that I was a sinner saved by grace. And that was it. I realized I'd come out of one kingdom into a brand new one. It was brand new to me and it's changed my life completely. It's changed my life completely. So you realized you had to follow the living God, the one who had in one sense shown you that he was living and had a superior power because he healed you. We might say you had an allegiance encounter. You realized that you could not follow the living God the God who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and all that's in them, and the God in the lodge called the great architect of the universe. How did it become clear to you about serving these two masters? Well, God showed me in no uncertain terms that he loved me. Even while I was a sinner, he still loved me. And that, that to me, changed my my, well, I can't say it's my thoughts. It, it's my whole being inside me um, that this, this God is not only true, not only uh, the God of the impossible, but a God who loves me, me, a sinner, saved by grace, His grace. And to me, that changed my life completely. And I realized that all the, all the stuff that I'd been involved in was junk, absolute junk. And I wanted it out of my life. I asked God for one particular thing and he took it away from me and freed me from it. And I could feel the darkness go out of me. Glenn, that is a real superior power that he can take all that stuff and cast it into the sea of forgetfulness. Yes, oh yeah, yeah, yes, it is indeed. And you know, um, the surety of God is the thing that has kept me um, alive, really. Um, because most people, when they start worrying about you know, that they've got this disease and that disease or had it. Um, they worry about dying. But the Lord has given me such a peace about this, this um, eternal life that I can't get over it. it. It's something that you can dream about, but I know this is real. This is real. And I know that once I leave this old body, I'm getting a brand new body that'll need know no sickness that will um, uh, well disease can't touch it because it'll be a body like Jesus and and I'll be like him I'll be like him then that's what I'm aiming for now if I can but of course I'm just a mere man so you know my chances of making it um, are pretty good because he's there to guide me. He's there to guide me. Glenn, what message would you give to all those Freemasons who are sick in their body, have heart problems, have cancer, what are dying? 
What would be your personal message to them? There's only one message, fellas. Come out of Freemasonry. Find the Lord Jesus Christ. Go to a Bible-believing church, a Bible-believing church. Get yourself saved, because all you've got to do is go before the Lord. You can do it in your own bedroom. Kneel down and just say, Lord, I'm so sorry for what I've been mixed up in. But would you please forgive me, release me from it, and bring me into your kingdom with the Lord Jesus Christ. Please forgive me, release me from it, and bring me into your kingdom with the Lord Jesus Christ.